Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I really really love trout fishing and this spring I caught my biggest ever brown trout that was 56 centimeters long. An unbelievable specimen here in Estonia. For the rest of the summer I only managed to get smaller brown trout and nothing spectacular. Sadly today is already the last day of trout fishing season so fingers crossed we catch something good and finish this season like we started it with a unit of a fish. Good morning everyone, we are going fishing today. This is the last day of the trout season, so let's make it a good one. I'm today on a completely new stretch, never been here. It's a bit of a gamble, but hopefully we can get some nice fish. I have my gear ready, I'm gonna get changed, and then let's head to the river. Oddly enough, even though it's September, there's still so many mosquitoes, I really need to get out of my shorts as soon as possible, so I'll see you in a second. Well, that was nice and quick, let's get the gear and get fishing. Someone said under my last video that I should yap less and take a breather. So here you go guys, here is a nice calm 30 seconds without me doing any talking. I'm actually waist deep in mud, stuck, and this is heavy. I should have just gone through the river, not through this thin mud hole. I didn't think it was going to be this soft and this deep. <sighs> Thankfully, I'm past the worst part of it. Never doing that again. I had to literally throw my rod, my camera, my camera bag across, otherwise it would have all been stuck in the mud with me. Uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, drowned. Yes. Oh, that was, that was heavy. <laughs> Already at the beginning. Almost died, let's say that. The funny thing is, I haven't even done any fishing yet and I'm all covered in mud, as you can see. Literally everywhere. That was a horrifying experience. Never have I go into mud pools. So, let's make the first cast. Let's get a low. I will start off with a spinner and then we will try out some wobblers. I was sent two really awesome wobblers by a craftsman here in Estonia. I will show it to you in a second. I will try those out a bit later but first let's just go with the spinner it works in most cases and if you find any deeper pools then we use the wobblers so this is the spinner i will be using it's the meps aglia 2 so made in france i guess french people really know their lures and i will show you the two wobblers now here is one of the wobblers very cool looking really like the hooks and everything they have treble hooks might change these out but for now since there is pike also here i've heard i will keep the treble hooks on and this is the second bobbler really cool ones if you want to check the craftsman out then there is a link to his uh, facebook page over here so make sure to go check it out I really have my hopes up today because if I don't catch anything I have to wait until the 1st February to try again and there is also the slimmest chance that I actually can catch a rainbow trout from here so I'm very very excited. I really love fishing on new rivers and streams and the goal for next year is to fish on even more new waters than this year. By the way, if you guys are even wondering why did I go into the mud puddle, it's because over here, this, all of it, it's actually a sheep pen and there was a herding dog over there. I really did not want to go anywhere near that guy, so I decided to go on the shortest route, which was through mud, which got very deep. I think if I would have been in the mud and just wiggled myself a bit more, uh, it would have been probably above my head. Very dangerous. Never doing that again. But now, let's go catch a nice fish. So in this river, you can get perch trout some pike and oddly enough there is also rainbow trout in here which is not native to estonia so if we catch one that would be very cool because i've never caught the rainbow before you can really see how high the water levels have been here because you can see up on this twig there's literally weeds this means the water levels have been like almost a meter higher than it is right now yeah crazy really had some bad floods 
like a month and a half ago. Thankfully, the river systems have recovered so we can fish again. Since it's a very long and straight stretch, I'm gonna make some long casts over here and uh, hopefully we can get a hit or a fish like that. Or snagged, that's also an option. I'm so used to my old rods that it's very hard for me to make accurate casts with this one. Because yeah, guys, I have a new rod and I'll tell you why. I went fishing two weeks ago on a different river for trout and I fell into a beaver hole, broke my rod from four different spots, had to go and replace it, went to the fishing store, bought a new rod. Pretty much it's the same rod, it's uh, also Lucky John Bazara, but this one is 16, the one that I had was 18 and an older model, so it has a bit of a test difference. Also the funny story with this rod, I bought it from the store, got back to the river to start fishing and then I discovered that the rod tip, like the up most upper ring, the inside of it was actually broken. So I couldn't do any fishing and I had to wait a few more days to go and get it fixed. It was very, very very annoying because it took me more than two hours to drive to the fishing store and back to get this uh, rod to start fishing again to record a video and yeah I could not record anything. Now I just have to get used to this rod and casting with it. I know it's a slight difference but even a slight difference really messes up your muscle memory. I think over there on that curve that's a pretty good spot there could be some fish i can see some structure and some slack area over there so let's hope we actually get something by the way today's fun drink is something special you want to watch out for that i think maybe 99 percent of the viewers who are watching this video right now have not had that fun drink over there is the mud hole i got stuck in i'm gonna have ptsd on mud holes now when trout fishing you usually want to fish in the deeper holes in the river but sometimes when it's like evenly fat like this but there's reeds on the side the fish can hide under the reeds or just uh, behind some small pockets of weeds so it's also worth to make a few casts but not to spend too long over here still want to look for those deeper holes after I finished fishing in the shallows, I got to a very nice area where there was a bend in the river. I decided to cast right into the bend and wait a few seconds because there was a very deep hole. A few moments later, I had my first fish of the session on the hook. Huge trout. But very nice trout. One of the biggest ones I've ever had. My net is stuck, it is bad. Come on, net. Ugh. Okay, that's a prime fish. That's a very, very good fish. Oh, <laughs> look at that trout, that's huge. That's like 40 centimeters plus. Holy, okay, I'm gonna keep it in the water. Let's go measure it and take a quick photo. That's such a nice fish. Oh, it came out of nowhere. That fish is huge and the colors are so nice. And also the red spots and everything. This fish is amazing. Oh, that's the perfect fish. Even if we don't get any other trout today, that's the perfect fish to end the season. Okay, I'm gonna go and unhook the fish very quickly and let's take a quick photo. What a beautiful brown trout. Not the most deep and vibrant colors, but still a great looking fish. This fish was 43 centimeters long and I could not have hoped for a better fish to finish the trout season. And what have we caught now? A personal best stick from this river. Nice one. This one is extremely straight. That's actually a beautiful stick. Anyways, I haven't had any other bites right now. So I think I'll make a few more casts with this uh, spinner. And then I'm going to switch to the handcrafted wobblers. Because they look very, very interesting. And I think I can get a fish on them. Especially if the fish are huge over here. Like 43 centimeters. It's a very, very decent fish. I'm actually slowly getting the hang of casting my lure with this rod. Which is very nice. Oh, there's so much tiny bait fish. That's cool. Because my accuracy at the beginning was so so bad. Thankfully now I can actually cast where I plan to cast, not just make 10 casts and then finally hit the spot I wanted to hit. Such a nice area under all those trees, but there's no way I can cast over there. But I can always try. No, no, no. I'll get snagged and then I'm gonna splish and splash around and then there will be no fish left over here, which I don't want. I've just uh, spotted two pike. One is of them, one actually flew the scene and went all the way to the right side, but I think we might be able to catch the pike as well. Which I don't really want to, but I mean, it looked like a decent pike. So let's see if it will hit the lure. Nah, it's gone. But yeah, they were hiding over here in this, uh, I think it's like 20 centimeters of water and just uh, 
like fully slack area and there were two of them and this is the moment when things went downhill my microphone fell into the water so some of the audio is messed up but i tried to save as much as i could so let's cover what happens i managed to get snagged as i usually do and this was a very bad one thankfully i managed to retrieve my lure which i am super grateful for then i hooked into a beautiful jack pike oddly it looked very very blue which is not how a pike usually look over here Then I had a fun drink segment of the video, the special segment. I had a special drink, which I got from Finland, but now it seems like it's absolutely everywhere. I'll be honest, not my favorite flavor, but it definitely kept me energized. So cheers guys. I managed to catch one more pike and saw a huge shoal of perch, which was very cool to see. And now I've kind of gotten to the part of the video where I have to say that, hey, YouTube thinks you might like this video. So please watch it, kind human. Take care. Bye bye.